It's Tuesday, May 28th, and I'm your host, Paula Hersey. On Barnstable today, we have an update on downtown Hyannis parking initiatives. We learn more about a special place for veterans to heal. Now for a look at municipal and legislative notes. As a part of a town, Barns a town of Barnstable initiative to address illegal and excessive trash disposal problems in environmentally sensitive areas, the Katua Town Dock will now be considered a pack-in, pack-out location and will no longer have trash receptacles. Please take your trash with you when using this town way to water. We appreciate your help in keeping our waterways and the town of Barnstable clean. We lead off today's segments with a look back at a special Memorial Day program at Barnstable West Barnstable Elementary School. Last Friday, students at Barnstable West Barnstable Elementary School paid tribute to those who have paid the ultimate price for our freedom. Faculty, staff, and veterans joined parents around the flagpole to recite poems and lift their voices in song and learn the lessons of freedom. Channel 18 was there to help spread the message that veteran and representative Tim Whalen hoped families took time to hear this holiday weekend. Principal Beth Forbes wanted students to take a moment to reflect on the true meaning of Memorial Day. Freedom is a very, very fragile thing. And what makes it fragile is it all depends upon our people. And our next generation needs to learn and understand the value of that freedom. And I can't say enough good things about the staff here at Barnesville, West Barnesville Elementary for taking the time to teach their children, uh, the children about this, and to have them participate in a really patriotic program. And this, it's not like this is once in a while. They do this every year. I've been here every year. And um, they continually teach these children these values that they'll take forward as adults. I mean, we can think, I think many of us, when we were kids, I remember participating in programs like this, and it built such a, it instilled such a love of country and love of my community attending programs like this that I put on the uniform when I was younger and I went on to serve my country. And if we lose that, then we lose the freedoms that we're talking about. We need another generation of heroes to step up and defend us. When I'm in my 70s and 80s, I need some of these young women, some of these young men to put on that uniform and defend my grandchildren. My grandchildren may put on that uniform someday too. What does this program mean to BWB? so important for these kids to just pause and take a moment and understand why they have Monday off and what sacrifices people have given so that they can have the freedom that they have. And I think it's just so important to take that time to reinforce it with the kids. Poppy, poppy, what do you tell? I think it's just a great thing to have a wonderful family weekend, but at the same time have those moments where we talk about why we're having the weekend and have those moments where we just take a little time to remember why we're doing this and all the sacrifices that these people made for us so that we can have all these fun things that we do. It's all about love of country and the staff here at BWB and the leadership here at BWB, they get that and I'm just proud to be a part of this every year. Are the parking lots? Are there enough spaces for those busy summer days? Director of Planning and Development Elizabeth Jenkins talks with us in studio about a recent community workshop addressing those challenges and more for Hyannis downtown parking. Finding a parking spot on Main Street or in downtown Hyannis sometimes may be difficult, but the Town of Barnstable is working on that. With me today, Director of Planning and Development Elizabeth Jenkins. Elizabeth, welcome. Hi, Paula. Thank you so much for having me back to talk about this important downtown Hyannis topic. It really is. So uh, just recently, you had a public meeting, uh, kind of an open house about parking. Uh, you had some strategies revealed and then had some open discussion. Tell us uh, what you gleaned from that meeting. We did. It was. A, I thought it was a great meeting. Um, it was hosted by Planning and Development as well as our parking consultant, um, a group from Nelson Nygaard. 
um, and a, um, a gentleman named Matt Smith who has experience in other communities across um, Massachusetts and elsewhere actually implementing parking strategies. So he came in and admittedly we threw a lot of information out at our audience, but um, he was fantastic. I think everyone was fantastic and really appreciated that we were outlining, I think, a way forward for us in Hyannis in terms of strategies. So we talked about, again, sort of the way we manage, um, we being the town, the way we manage our municipal parking lots really um, on two different levels, sort of the core of, of downtown Hyannis, this block right around here by Town Hall and down at the harbor where we see lots of demand, and then some of those um, outlying lots um, that are close by and, and walkable but don't get as much use. So how do we think about ways to um, to sort of spread the demand out that, that people have over those lots and, and how do we look at increasing availability? So we really looked at five different um, areas, five different strategies for managing parking. Um, they, they sort of, they ranged from, again, management that the town can do in terms of managing the time people can park, both on street and in the lot, um, managing the price that you pay um, right now yep. free everywhere in downtown Hannes, which is great and has some advantages, um, but also sort of at that peak of the season has some drawbacks as well because uh, you don't see that parking availability. Right. So we talked about managing time, managing price. Um, we talked about uh, how people access the parking lots and know where those are. So um, things like wayfinding, signage, um, as well as sort of your virtual interaction with that parking lot. So if, if I'm a visitor here and looking on my phone, um, how do I know where to park? How do I know it's available? Um, and then uh, the fourth one was sort of looking at the, um, you know, looking at the, uh, the experience that people have. Everybody who parks their car becomes a pedestrian. Um, so what's that experience right. that you have when you're walking to your destination? So is it well lit? Is it comfortable? Um, and some strategies for dealing with that as well. And um, finally, um, something that, that I think that the town and the business can do cooperatively, which is managing where employees park. Uh, so a, a lot of the people who are working in the restaurants or even say working at Town Hall, let's say use the same public parking right. that our customers can park. So how can we come up with some other strategies um, for managing parking for employees uh, who have a different, a different need than say uh, a resident who's just um, coming to grab a quick cup of coffee or a visitor who's coming for a few hours and experiencing our community for the first time. Um, so there was a lot of, uh, again, sort of a lot of information, a lot of solutions. Right. Um, our audience was amazing. I think people, again, were really excited to see that we're moving forward to, um, to implementation. Right. Um, and we talked about um, sort of a lot of these issues and people were able to sort of mill around and talk with staff and, and mm. vote and weigh in on their thoughts. So I, I like that this was an interactive um, uh, uh, session here where it wasn't just somebody talking at you. There was really gathering input of having people come up and say, hey, I like this solution. Um, so they were able to see some of these solutions through this presentation. We were. So what we did is we we laid out all of those um, all of those solutions, and there was a lot of talking at and and we admitted that up right. front. Um, and so if you weren't able to be there, or if you, if you were there and sort of wanted to go recap on this information, we have that full presentation as well as the PowerPoint, which we designed. I know nobody likes a a presentation <laughs> with a lot of words on the slide, right. but we designed this one to make sure that it would be. Um, sort of able to capture all the information that was presented afterwards. So those are up on our, our parking plan webpage. It's ac accessible from our planning and development department homepage. Okay. So if you're interested in the results um, that were presented, folks can go and take a look at that as well. And then again, we had this sort of um, interactive uh, sort of open house session where people could vote. Uh, we've actually recreated that through an online survey oh, um, that's on the website as well. So if you, again, weren't able to make it or you made it and had to leave early, let's say because there was a Bruins game starting, we totally <laughs> understood that, um, you can go back um, right. and spend a little more time with the options and still right. sort of log in your perspective, um, either by voting or just by typing in comments. 
yeah. um, on the survey that we have up on the Planning and Development Department homepage. So one of the things that, um, you know, having parked here as a town employee, but also as, a, you know, somebody who's shopped on Main Street, is that there's a lot of hidden parking lots, um, especially back off the north side, yeah. um, that just better signage would probably help. I, I think of the one that you walk up the alleyway through Tooney, yeah. where the hair salon is yeah. off of a, um, a truck, is it a Texaco station or something? Um, so signage is really important in this uh, whole implementation piece, right? Yeah, I think that wayfinding is a big piece. And, and you know what, we've tried sometime, if you go out there and sort of look at Main Street, you'll see the parking and then it says, no overnight parking, and then there's another sign that says no ferry parking, and then there's another <laughs> sign that says something, and, and especially, you know, I, I don't even care if you're a visitor. If, if right. you're a resident and you're sort of taking in all of that information, it's really hard. You know, you only get a second. So right. um, what, what they've given us are some sort of, um, some new strategies in terms of how to best design that wayfinding, what should the message be. One of my favorite ones was, was you know, I hear actually from a lot of people who come to Hyannis, perhaps, um, with a final destination of Nantucket that they didn't even know that there's a fantastic walkable historic Main Street here right. because that's you know that's not what they're here for so how do we better market downtown through our our, our wayfinding for um, you know for parking that says hey here you know this is parking not for ferries but this is parking for our, our historic downtown Main Streets our right. shops and our restaurants and and use it not only as a way to help direct people, but as a way to market all the amazing things Hyannis Main Street has to right. offer. And my husband, who has lived in Hyannis uh, his whole life, um, says, are they going back to meters on Main Street? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so that was one of the, uh, certainly that's one of the options. We see communities all over the country and right. downtown is all over the country um, um, managing parking um, through pricing. Right. And, uh, you know, I have to say, as we've gone out to the community, and talked about this, um, uh, there's a recognition of that, that that's a tool that people use, that people want their businesses to be accessible to customers, right. that again, there are ways to price parking um, that makes it accessible to residents. Um, you know, you could do a resident discount or, right. or something like that. So, um, you know, residents aren't paying that cost. You would have to do it seasonally, obviously. We don't, ha we have a d very different demand in, in January than we have in July, um, but technology gives us that flexibility. And, you know, I have to say I'm very surprised at the willingness that the Main Street community has had to enter into that mm. conversation. Personally, I think we should make sure that we're doing the low cost things really, really well, okay. um, that we have that wayfinding in, that we have the time, um, sort of the time that we have in the timed uh, lots, that we have that right, that that's really working, that we've worked with our businesses. Um, to try to free up as many spaces we have by, by putting our employees in other places. Right. And then if next season we're still having this conversation about there's a parking problem in Hyannis, um, it seems like people are willing to, willing to have that conversation. But right. we're taking it one step at, at a time, again, sort of laying out all the possibilities uh, here. Right. But if you have a strong feeling about <laughs> that, um, one way or the other, we know right. some people do. Um, again, I'm, I'm surprised how, ma how many people are, are more in the middle. Um, please go to go yep. to the website and, and survey is on the website. They can watch the presentation, yep. or they can always talk to myself or, or Liz Hartsgrove, um, who are managing right. this project for planning and development. And we right. love to hear those perspectives. And well, it's have worked well in the Bismore Park area. So you know, as as all of these areas start to get a fresh new set of eyes on it, yeah. and and looking at you know how can we make a, a resident and visitor experience an experience. Right, really right. Like. And because and I think that's our goal is we really want to add more experiences for people right. downtown, experiences for families and places for people to live year round. And, uh, you know, as we start to add this content, um, right. you know, it requires us to, to manage demand a little bit better. So we want to make sure that we understand all the tools that we have in, in our toolbox to do that. And we're talking to our community and making those decisions together. Excellent. Thanks so much, Elizabeth. Thank you, Paula. The Nicholas G. Azaros Memorial Foundation Fund, the Vet Center, and Sandy Neck build a partnership for veterans and Gold Star families. Sandy Neck, a place to heal. Steve Azaros, uh, Deputy Chief, has been a beachgoer for a long time. And we've, uh, we noticed, you know, we knew all about his son, Nick. Um, 
but he's always out on the beach and this is his place where he comes to relax with his family. And there was another veteran that had come in last year and asked me about could we do something special for the vets. And what they wanted to do was have a little place out on the beach, little area. And I said, absolutely. So every Saturday night they put out a couple flags and they started to do that and they started to show up. Steve and I had talked several, for several years about I wanted to do something to honor the veterans. It, this is my favorite place in the world is right here, Sandy Neck. And what a healing place it is. So well, I can, yeah. I can mm -hmm. say that it, it was kind of born from a veteran, where I think most um, great ideas are, yes. <laughs> frankly. Um, a veteran came to us a, a few years ago and said, I really want a place to be with other vets, to have community, to relax and enjoy and just enjoy our life. And let's go to the beach and let's go to Sandy Neck. And it wasn't formalized at that point. Um, and then I'll hand it over yeah, to you. Yeah, and that veteran <laughs> is a friend. And I would see him on the beach, you know coincidentally, and he asked me, do you think we could do something for veterans on Sandy Neck? And I said, yes, if you can help me. So it started with him working with Donna and having uh, sections of the beach reserved for veterans to park, because it's so busy sometimes in the summer, way out on the beach, it's nice to have a place to park. So we put up signs, veterans parking, and we started kind of with that. And, and then the thought was, Let's, let's give them the permit to go out there and, and the, the equipment. And initially, in our mind, it was to thank a vet. Uh, we can't um, bring Nick back or all the others that have fallen, but we can, we can remember them and use them to, in a way to help thank others and support others. But it was Dara Gannon, you know, of the Cape Cod Foundation, Sean Gannon's wife, you know, who said, Steve, this is beautiful, but let's take it a step further and let's tie it into a, a program. And, uh, and I guess because, you know, obviously we knew Dara and the Gannons and the Cape Cod Foundation, we knew Donna at the beach and we knew Dr. Howard. We were able to put them all together. It's not easy to do, to get the federal government, the <laughs> local government, the Sandy Neck Board, the Cape Cod Foundation, and the Exaros Family Fund all together, and we did it. And uh, that was the, the right thing to do. And um, I, I, our goal is, it to, is for it to become one of our signature things that our family does. We kind of do a lot of little things to try to help as many people as we can. But we feel like this, this is, this is going to be one of the most important. And this year we have enough funding for 20. Next year we want to make it 50. And, and give our veterans a place to heal. So, of course, I wrote this letter stating, you know, why they should be out here, the, the sand and the, con you know, the companionship and the family and you know, that we have hiking, we have kayaking, we have camping, the different aspects of Sandy Neck that are so healing. Uh, so that letter, unbeknownst to me, went further than I thought it was going to. And then it was a couple days later, Steve sent me an email, said, touchdown, you did it. So, and I said to him, no, we did it. So uh, it's just a, this is a, a really, like I said, a passion. This is a passion for me to get these guys together and these women and Gold Star's families. And I was really, really, that was the thing that I added. And I said, I really want the Gold Star family because who is more of a veteran than, a, than families have lost a loved one into any of the combat? Being in nature, uh, part of it is when we do motorcycling, you know, being outside, being in the wind, that's, we found that therapeutic. Also being with others. Um, then the beach kind of has that a little bit too, where you, you have nature, the wind, the ocean. We bring our dog, you know, and it's always leashed, of course. <laughs> and uh, so you're out in this beautiful place and you realize how lucky you are to be alive. And you realize um, the price of freedom, you know, and try to balance that. Because I'll, my life is kind of bittersweet. There's days when I'm very proud. There's days when I'm very uh, sad, you know. So we balance it. I call it bittersweet. And, and um, a few years ago, I felt better about what had happened. Someone gave me good advice because they, I kept saying, why? 
why? You know, why Nick out of thousands? And a man said, you don't know why? I said, no, I don't know why. He said, God saw Nick doing good things and needed to take him to do great things. And at that moment, I, I accepted it. And it was right around this time where I had accepted it as a, as a, a dad, and as a family, we healed better. And at the same time, we're on Sandy Neck. And we said, let's put this together. Let others experience the beauty of, of Barnstable and Sandy Neck and the ocean and animals and, and the sand. And whether you want to be together as veterans, or Gold Star Family, or you just want to be alone and take a walk on that beautiful place. It's incredible when you're out there. And that's kind of how we thought it would work. I think nature, in part, is freedom. Um, it's freedom to let down your guard. Um, it's freedom to just be one with, with your environment. Um, and we'll do therapies where maybe veterans have to write about their traumas or have to speak about their traumas or just do some healing work by feeling their emotions um, rather than avoiding them. And that's a very difficult thing to do with others um, because it's a very personal process. So going out to a place that's surrounded by beauty where you can be alone um, when you want to be alone and um, just share and pour that emotion and those experiences into the world um, and get it off of yourself, I think can be very healing for people. These are called challenge coins. So veterans and military people or law enforcement kind of have your own special coin. And it means a lot. So I'm on the board of directors of Mass Fallen Heroes in Boston, which is a bunch of veterans, police officers, firefighters, and we built this foundation. So I mentioned this idea to them, and they said, oh my god, we love it. So they gave us the 20 special coins, which we now give to Dr. Howard. And when, when uh, the people here feel like this veteran is the right type that would love something like Sandy Neck, this is kind of the past. So they give them the coin, they bring the coin to the booth at Sandy Neck. They all know kind of what it means. And that way you don't have to share names in a way, or it's just mm -hmm. this, this person has this coin and they know what to do. And, and um, almost uh, another way to remember, you know, the price of our freedom. These are all Massachusetts fallen heroes. And uh, I know they would want to help those that made it home. My chief, Frank Fredrickson, tells the story of now years later, uh, Nick is a Marine, and the chief took Nick hunting on Sandy Neck. And he, even though I didn't see it, but I can see it in my mind, the chief said his last vision of Nick is uh, him hunting and standing on the dune holding the firearm like a Marine. And uh, so in, in a way, we, from childhood to Marine, Sandy Neck has been part of his life and many others. And we want to pass that on and help our veterans feel our love because Americans love our veterans and feel uh, like they have a place to heal. And, and that's how it came together. And that, that's the big thing for this, you know, what a perfect place to be to go out and just, you know, shake their hand and thank them and say thank you for your service. And we're proud to be with the VA, you know, we're very proud to be with the VA and the town of Barnesville and Sandy Neck and, and um, it helps us heal too. Neighbors helping neighbors. The Housing Assistant Corporation's big fix-a-thon is celebrating its 10th anniversary back where it first started, right here in the town of Barnstable. This is Tony Shepley. What are you doing from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. on October 5th, 2019? How about joining us for the big fix? 
The Big Fix is important to Housing Assistance Corporation because it's really the our mission in action, a demonstration of our mission in action. So it's an old-fashioned barn raising where we bring people together and come out and help our friends and neighbors and legitimately help people stay in their home and age in place. And some of these homes we go to, the people are just uh, at a point in their life where they really need the, the services and the help of their community to stay aging in place. Uh, they used to be active and used to take, you know, really great care of their home, but whatever, the, a, a disability, an injury, a veteran, age, right, they need, they need help from the community to be able to do that. As I say to all builders, we've been very fortunate on Cape Cod for quite a few years in that we've all been very busy and we've all been able to find good jobs and we've all been making money. So um, to that I say, hey, let's take some of that money and let's give back. There's always people out there that are less fortunate than we are. There's always people out there that need our help and we're the people to go out and do it. And so, and there's the most part, I think we found that the building community on Cape Cod wants to do that. They want to help uh, and they want to uh, do things that make the community better. It's definitely, uh, for me, the most exciting event of the year. And one of the reasons is because of the, all the participation we have. Um, I, I work with a group of about 40 people from Cape Cod 5, and, and that's really important and, and big for us. Um, it's also great not only to see the homeowners and, and the pride that they have in their house and how happy they are, um, but also in the beginning of the day when everyone gets together, hundreds of people this year in Barnstable, it'll be at... Uh, at uh, Barnstable High School, that's that's quite a sight to see everyone there ready to help, all excited, and so that's something that I always look forward to. I've been very fortunate in my life. I've always had a job. I've, I've always had a house. I've always been able to do stuff, and to me, it's just time to give back. And it feels good walking away knowing that you've accomplished something for somebody else. Up next, things to do, places to go, and people to meet. After 34 years and five months on the Hyannis Fire Department, Deputy Chief Dean Melanson will retire on Friday, May 31st. The Hyannis Fire Department invites you to stop by anytime between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. to share some coffee and memories and to wish the Dep farewell, Godspeed, health, and happiness as he embarks on this next chapter in his life. Comments, suggestions, accolades, connect with us on Facebook, email us, or send us an old-fashioned note by Carrier Pigeon. Channel 18 works for you. I'm Paula Hersey, and thank you for watching Barnstable today.